In this video, I'm going to show you how we can start looking at collisions between objects. So right now, if we run our game, our objects do collide and they bounce off each other. They can push each other, but we don't have a way that we can actually check this in code. So let's start with these boulders or our rocks here. So I'm going to select the first rock. I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to make a new script. And I'm just going to call it, I'll, I'll keep it the same. So we'll call it rock. Now I'm going to create and add this. Now remember, this is the instance of a prefab. So what we did here is not going to add it to the second rock yet until we apply the override. And that's fine. I'm going to do that at the end. I want to show you first with only one script on this one rock. So let's open the rock script. And now to detect collisions, we have several different methods we can use that are built into Unity. So like everything else so far that I've shown you, we have two different physics systems. So we want to make sure we use the 2D versions. What we can do is type on collision. And then you're going to see in the autocomplete, we have a few different options here. We have on collision enter 2D, on collision exit 2D, and on collision stay 2D. So we're going to go through them one by one. Now the names do pretty much sum up what they do and it's very similar to the button presses that we used earlier. So on collision 2D is only gonna happen the very first frame where a collision happens. So let's just do a debug.log. I'm gonna do rock hit something. Let's open our console, we'll run our game. Okay, so we see only once the rock hits something. So it's only going to load that the first frame when it hits something, but it's going to do that for every object that it hits. So if I move this player into the rock, notice we had it a few more times. And then when it hit this platform, when it hit the other rock, so we had multiple different ones, but only one at a time. Now the next one is on collision stay. 2D. So if we go run this one, this is like when we use get button down and get button. So this is kind of like get button where it's going to trigger every frame that it's touching something. And then if we start hitting other objects, it's going to happen even more. Okay. And now that it's flying through the air, it's not hitting anything. Okay. And then the last one, I'm sure you figure out how it works but we can do on collision exit. And this is only gonna happen when it exits a collision. So notice nothing happened yet, but if I hit it with the player and then I exit, we get one. And then when it falls off the platform again, so we have multiple different ways that we can check for when a collision happens or when it finishes. Now with that though, we don't actually know what it hit. So we could actually go into our script again. And if we remove this line, we can use collision. And what this is, this here is being passed in when this method is called. Unity takes care of this for us with the physics system. But what it's saying is it's creating this collision variable which is the type collision 2D. It's creating that and passing it into the method when it happens. So anytime there's a collision, Unity's providing us this data so we know what happened and what collided with it. So in this case here, if we wanted to, we could put collision.gameObject.name. And now this is gonna find the main game object that this collision is part of, and then it's gonna get the name. So that's the same as the name right up here. So if we run this now, we're actually going to see what we collided with. So now when it exits, we see we hit the player, we hit the platform, we hit the other rock. So it at least gives us the name, but we still can't really do anything with that. I'm going to remove that line. I'm going to change this back to on collision enter. And now we're going to talk about something new here called tags. So let's go back into Unity. And we actually have quite a few built in. So first thing before I forget, 
which I don't want to do. I want to select this rock. I'm going to go to overrides, apply all. So it pushes this script. So now both rocks have the same script. Let's select our player. And let's look up at the top here. It has a box that says tag and it says untagged. So just like the name, this is where we can put a little tag on objects that we can use in our code. You can think of it just like a label or a name tag. It works on the same way. By default, Unity already has one called player because almost every game is going to have some form of a player in it. And then we have some stuff like main camera. We don't need to worry about those right now. Let's select player. So our player is now tagged as player. I'm just going to apply that override now. All right, so we have a tag on our player. Now let's go back to our code here. And what we can do is we can do an if statement. And inside here, we can use this collision object like we did to get the name. So we can do collision dot game object dot tag. And then we can check if it's equal to, and then we can put in whatever we want here. So we can check this, we can see if it's the player. And now we can debug dot log rock hit player or rock hit the player. Now we can collide our rock with any object in the game. The only time it's going to output this is if it hits something with the tag of player. So let's go check how this runs. Okay, so nothing in the console. If I go and hit this one, I hit that one, I hit this one. Notice every time we hit it, it's going to output we hit the player. But anything else, no output. So this is how we can start checking what we're colliding with and what we're hitting. Now we have this way, this will work, but this isn't actually the way that Unity recommends checking for a tag. It's a bit slow and it has a bit of issues behind the scenes that you don't really need to worry about. But the way they recommend it, I just wanted to show that first, it's actually still quite easy. So we still want to use collision. But instead of getting the game object and then the tag, they have a method built in that we can do collision dot game object dot compare tag. And then we type in the tag player here. So like I mentioned, both will work, but this is the more correct way to do it. So now we know how to check if we hit an object. We're just going to leave this as is right now. And I will see you in the next video.